In this video, we are going to again look at the tool space, but we're going to focus on the settings tab here. Now, like the prospector tab, settings can be turned off with a simple little button here. And it tends to get turned off quite a bit because you'll type in settings and it'll turn it off. Likewise, just type in settings again to turn it back on. This as well has the master view or the active drawing settings view. Master view is good for copying styles from one drawing to another. So if we have a couple drawings open, we'll see the, both the drawings here. I can expand, we'll say one of these, drag and drop it into this drawing here. So you can copy styles from one drawing to another, just one style if you want. If we go to active view, it only shows the one drawing. And then there's two additional options, active drawing labels only. So whatever labels are in a drawing, it only shows the labels and labels only view, that'd be a master at the bottom. I tend to leave things on active drawing settings view unless I'm copying stuff in. Now the settings tab is how Civil 3D functions. Everything is built in here. This is the function, this is the fundamentals of building a template to start your work. There are thousands of uh, styles in here, hundreds of settings, thousands of settings that you can set up beforehand to help you do your work quicker. If I expand general, multi-purpose styles, marker styles, we'll see I have a couple here. I've got one for an assembly, one for a PI point, and just a standard one. And then the standard that you cannot get rid of, this just comes back no matter what you do. There's a couple of them in Civil 3D that just keep coming back. We have feature line styles here. So all the different styles of feature lines, different slope patterns, projections, codes, links, shape styles, more for corridors and how your grading looks. Label styles, again, a big, huge part of Civil 3D. This governs how everything is made, how everything looks. So if I just right click on any of these and go into edit, it brings up a view of how this label looks. The information tab, is how it's named. General, textile, visibility, do I want to see it? Don't, uh, do I not want to see it? What layer it's going to be placed on? Parent, child, it, layers, and we'll cover that in another video. Plan readability, do I want it to flip if the page rotates, etc., or if the angle of the text gets too great? Layout tab is how the label is built, so azimuth over distance, so direction, general segment direction, and you can specify a whole bunch of options here. I've got some style videos that go through this, so go take a look at those. Uh, your text height, offsets, border visibility, background mask, etc. And if we select distance, that'll govern the bottom of the line. So if I come in here and I change this, that will update my text size. Now, everything in Civil 3D is handled via styles. The majority of stuff is handled via styles. Lines and text, uh, are not. However, we have feature lines, surfaces, labels on those feature lines and surfaces. They are handled by styles. If you want to change a text size, you have to do it through a label style. Uh, drag state, every label has a drag state. So if we grab the label and leader it away, that is considered drag state. And here are the options to handle that as well. So take a look through all the settings, take a look through all these objects here and just see kind of what's here when you're starting out Civil 3D. We have point styles, we have surface styles, we have parcel, grading, etc. all the way down through everything Civil 3D. So just take a look at what's here, get acquainted with where to find stuff because you will have to come in and modify a style. You will have to maybe build your own style. Most companies will have a preset up template. However, if you're building your own, you will be spending a lot of time in here. Another great part about the settings tab is at the bottom we see commands of some of the options. There's, they're not under everything. However, the general create an object, we have what's called commands. So if we expand commands, we can see these are commands that are built in Civil 3D. So if I wanna modify the way a command works, so if I come into parcel, I create parcel by layout. It brings up this window, for example. The default Civil 3D template, I believe this is set to 4,000. This is set to 100. This might be set to zero. 
or 10 or something, these will not be set up for what you need. So you will have to change them every time you come in here, which could be quite, quite a pain. If you create a parcel, change the options, create a parcel, change the options, create a parcel, change the options. That's where these commands come in. So just take a look at what you're doing. I'm going to create a parcel by a layout. I'm going to right click and edit my command settings, which will bring up this dialog box. Now the ones that are related to the commands themselves are generally with the check marks or the blue styles. These pages do not have anything to do with the command itself, although you can take a look if you want. So parcel sizing, when I run that dialog box, I've come in here and set my minimum area to be 330. I'm just gonna change this to 500 so we can see that it's changed in the window. I'm gonna change this to 50 and that to 10. So come in here and set these up. If you're doing something over and over and over again, I suggest coming in here. The preview graphics, automatic layout, how do you want it to run? Converting from entities, default styles, etc. So this will govern what styles get used when you create the object. What gets used. And again, you have to set up the styles before you can set them up in here. So if I hit OK now, and I go parcel, create parcel by layout, we can now see my minimum area here is 550, and there's the 10 I typed in. So I have modified that command to give me these settings by default. So I don't have to type them in over and over and over again. So again, most companies will give you a settings tab that's already set up. You'll have a template. This is when a template is being built. This is where all the work is being done. So if I open up a template, And I'll just take a look at a blank drawing here. There is absolutely nothing in this drawing, nothing at all. However, and I can even look under prospector, there's no points, there's no surfaces, there's no pipe networks, but under settings, this is a blank drawing. It comes in with all these styles. So I can start doing my work as a drafter. I can come in as a drafter designer and start working for the company day one and conform to their standards if all of this is set up correctly. Now, say you start a drawing without any styles in it. So say there's this, this drawing here, and actually let me start a new drawing and I'll open up the ACAD, the Civil 3D template that doesn't have any of my name styles in it. So if we go into the settings tab, I look at general multi-purpose marker. So this is Autodesk's civil 3D template that ships out of the box. So this is all their stuff here. So say I've opened that up, I started doing my work and I've realized I don't have the options I need. You can run the command A, uh, it's not AEC, it's import, styles, and settings. But first you have to save the drawing. So I'm going to run the command again, and I'm going to select my template and hit open. And it's going to look at my template and read all the styles into this window here. Say I want everything, I'm going to select the checkbox to say, give me everything. And yes, it doesn't look like it's checkmarked, but they're, they're going to come in. I'll hit OK, hit OK. and give Civil 3D a minute here. It's bringing all those styles from the template into this drawing. And as you can see, this has updated a little bit as it's brought a couple things in. And now we see I've imported 407 styles and 1,373 settings. So hit OK, and we see that my styles are now in here, along with the Autodesk ones. Now, say I want to get rid of some styles. There is now a command called purge styles. It'll come up and it'll look for every style that's not used in the drawing. So if it has a little orange arrow, it's being used. If it doesn't, have the orange arrows not being used. So I can come in here and I can turn off ones, I can select ones, etc. But if I hit okay, 
it's going to go and purge out any style that is not being used. Now I can run it again and it might grab some of these. Yeah, there's another 152. So I've purged out a lot of styles. So be, again, be very careful with purging styles. You can, you can actually get rid of stuff you need. And another thing with the settings tab is this feature line yellow bracket black is being used. If I didn't want it to be used, I can right click on it and go find references. And it's being used in my code set style code set assembly, which that makes is under here. If I right click on this and go replace with, it brings up another window where I can replace it with say the red one and the yellow one is no longer in use, I can delete it. So you can come in here and you can replace things, you can add things, you can remove things, etc. So that was a quick overview of the settings tab. Again, poke around in it, get acquainted with it and learn how to use it.